Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today is the launch of the new Intel Core Ultra Series processors. And a little bit of a plot twist, I have the U7 to cover, so the 765K. It's going to take a little bit of time to get used to all these new names. But we're going to be building a system today around that CPU. We've also got the 4070 Super here from Gigabyte and the boards that you might have seen me do the overview of. I've got a few other parts from Antec, also some Kingston and some Seagate stuff. And uh, I'm going to build a system today. We'll look at the power consumption and also the thermals, especially as there's some new little changes to the CPUs. That means that we now have a little bit less power draw. So it should result in some lower temperatures as well, which is obviously good for everyone. I'll, of course, run you through all the parts as we go throughout the video. But for now, let's get started. First up, the motherboard. I'm using the Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7. I have done a full overview on the channel. But for the price, this has got a lot of features built in. I love the power and reset buttons. Loads of quick release panels as well, so you can easily access all of the NVMe slots. We've got Gen 5 PCIe and also NVMe support as well. And then of course, our 1851 socket for our Intel Core Ultra 7 processor. So the 265K has a total of 20 cores. There's eight performance and 12 efficiency. A maximum turbo of 5.5 gigahertz and 20 threads as they have removed hybrid threading for this generation of CPU. This CPU is a little bit wider on one side than the previous generations. And then we'll put that down into the socket. Give it a little bit of a wiggle and then close that up. Latch that down and that's all installed. For memory, we're using Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5. They've kindly sent over a kit of 7,200 mega transfers per second. It's two 16 gig sticks, also CAS latency 38. Intel really pushing memory for the series of CPU. We're going to see 8,000, 9,000, possibly even 10,000 mega transfers per second kits coming out. They've also increased the baseline as well. So it went from 4,800 as a standard, if you don't set XMP, up to 6,400 as well. So a big bump there as well. So we'll open slots two and four and get these installed and get the notch all the way around. And clip these in. There you go. For storage, we're going to use my trusty Seagate Firecuda 530. This is a one terabyte Gen 4 drive. This does have Gen 5, like I mentioned on it, but I will be using more Gen 5 stuff in other builds, especially more higher end stuff. I think Gen 4 is real bang for buck at the moment, where Gen 5 is still a little bit expensive. So we've got a really nice quick release on this, the Q-Latch Click, I think it's called, and Q-Latch Plus. A little bit of plastic to take off the thermal pads. And I'm going to install this at 45 degrees. I'm going to push it down and clip it in. And then again for the heat sink, just have to wiggle it into position, push it down and that's installed. So now we can get our mounting hardware on for our cooler and we can get that into our case. I'm going to be using the Antex Vortex 360, a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler. Now although this is LGA1851, you can use LGA1700 coolers on it though. If you are just a bit hesitant and want to double check, then just contact the company that makes your cooler to just to confirm it. So I've got all my parts out. It looks to be fairly straightforward, like a standard Aztec design, which is a good thing. Makes life a lot easier. So we're just going to kind of wiggle these parts out to the wider position. And that will go around the back through to the motherboard. And we've got some standoffs for LGA 1700. These seem to be the same both sides. That will then thread through. On the bottom of our pump block, we've got these little brackets with the parts that go outwards. That will slide into there and then we'll screw the little screws in. Do that for both sides and also take off this film now so we don't forget later on. Just going to get my AIO prepped. I want to have it looking like this in the case this way around. And then we'll have the fans exhausting air out the top. So I'm going to put the cables to the back. So it should look something like this. Do that for all of those. And then we'll take the long screws that are included and they'll go through the fan frame and then into the radiator. So this is the case I'm using for this build, the Antec Performance 1FT ARGB. I have got a full review on the channel if you want to see this in a bit more depth, but quickly running you through, there's a pre-installed 120, three pre-installed 140s. One thing I really like, if you take out a couple of screws in the roof, the top panel just comes fully out, so that'll make our AIO installation really easy. This was the first case that I've looked at from Antec since I bought my Antec 1200 back in 2010, and I was really impressed. It's so solid, and they've certainly uh, upped their game for cases over the last few years. Hopefully, we'll be able to look at some other ones uh, on the channel, so fingers crossed for that. Especially that wood one looks very nice that they've just released. So I've routed the cables on purpose this way around so they'll be nice and easy to cable manage. And we'll just bring this top down and we can see where we're going to mount it. So for a 360, we're going to be at the very front. So we just need to find our smaller screws from the bag and then get that installed. And we can just bring this in, find the little catch points, lower it down. 
put back in the little two screws that came with and there we go so we get our accessory box out of the way i can get our motherboard installed get the aero pump onto the cpu and just a couple of steps left so i've just passed all the cables from those fans through to the back i'm going to get my power supply out now so we can get the eps connectors out to connect those a bit easier otherwise it can be a bit tricky after the fact the power supply i'm going to be using is an antec ne 850gm so fully modular 80 plus gold certified you've also got atx3 compliant so you can do the 12 volt high power connector without using to use adapters which is nice some just some simple branding on the sides then our modular interface has our 12 volt high power or the 16 pin i suppose you could say also got an eco hybrid mode on there as well it's a nice little touch got a big old bag of modular cables and a few velcro ties cable ties and also our screws for the power supply also nice to see that they're the right way around i've had a few power supplies that they're backwards so i could see that's uh, not the problem here 12 volt high power going in the bottom right hand corner here not sure it's the right way around eps connectors for our motherboard and then lastly one sata for the hub on the back of the case we've got a back plate for this case so the power supply will be screwed in and then we'll slide it in after the fact so just passing the power supply cables through i've got it found side down of course and then we'll be able to get this slid in nice thumb screws to easily put that into place and then i'll bring my eight pin eps cables up through to the top Okay, I have my EPS connectors already in there now, so we can bring in the motherboard. Get this all lined up. Nothing to really hold on to because we've not got a cooler on there yet, but I'll sort that out in a minute. Oh, there we go. There's a little notch there clicked in. So I can now get that screwed in with the included little tray of accessories, which is nice to see in the case. We can easily keep them divided. Okay, that's now all installed and I've also got the 8-pin EPS connected in. Now a bit of thermal paste on the CPU, we can put down the AO pump. A little bit of a line as it's a longer IHS. I'm going to have the tubes at the bottom for this one. I'll bring that down on there. So I'm just putting these on until they bite to begin with, but then I'm going to screw them down top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left, and then a kind of cross pattern like you do up a tyre on a car, for example. So then the pressure is nice and even across the IHS. Got a little peel on the AO. There we go. So now let's install the graphics card. For this one, we're going to be using the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 4070 Super. This is one of their more entry level cards, but certainly a good price to performance. Construction does feel a little bit plasticky, to be perfectly honest with you guys. I will have a full review of this card though, if you want to see a little bit more depth and a bit more, you know, deeper dive into it. So I'll link that on the card when it's live, but this could be a good option if you're under a bit of a budget as it will save yourself some pennies. So I'll take off the little guard and then we need to undo our top two PCI bracket screws. I remember on this case, you have to kind of take out the additional thumb screw to just get the access to that and then be able to pop it out. There we go. It does cover the extra one a little bit. So I can bring that card in and get that installed. There we go. And then reinstall the screws. So that is our system pretty much complete. Minus the cables, obviously, that's something I'm actually going to do off camera for this video. This is more of an like intermediate build guide rather than a beginner's one. Um, but there are loads of videos on YouTube if you want to see how to do that. Or just refer to your manual. It's fairly simple, so I'm going to leave it out for this one. Um, but then I can get into the BIOS, enable XMP, do my benchmarks. And then I can tell you my overall thoughts after a quick close-up look. I hope you enjoyed the close-up look at the system. I think it's come out really well. We've got a good mix of good looking and well-performing parts, also without spending loads on aesthetics or features that you won't use. Connecting the cables was fairly straightforward. There's also a little controller for the RGB on the AIO, but I've left it on rainbows. The other fans are on that, and it also looks good on camera anyway. Of course, if you're gonna build the system yourself, you can set it to whatever you fancy in your own motherboard software. 
I also enabled XMP in the BIOS, like I mentioned, so that set the memory to 7200 mega transfers and then ran my usual suite of tests for the system. As this is a new CPU, I'm gonna shake things up a little bit and cover the results in reverse order, starting with the GPU result. All of the games I tested at 1440p, high except Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is set to the highest settings. I will swap that out to high when I do my next big GPU retest though, likely for the 50 series. All of the games felt buttery smooth minus Cyberpunk with ray tracing. Of course, you could enable DLSS though to help with the frames. Moving on to the CPU test, all of these are available for free download so you can get these to compare to your own system. There's 3D Mark Time Spine Still Nomad, Cinebench Geekbench 5, and last but not least, Blender Render Test, which I did put on another graph just so it doesn't get stupidly small to try and read. I've also put the results from a recent build in there with the 14700K and a 4070 for a rough idea of how they compare. Performance is pretty much on par with the previous 14700K, even with the removal of hyperthreading on this series. Some do come out slightly ahead with single core tasks, for example, and some a little bit behind the multi-core, but they kind of average out. I will be doing some more comparisons and in-depth tests with the range as a whole once I can get the Ultra 9 and Ultra 5. I'll also use the same parts for both systems minus the motherboard. I like this is a bit more of a basic comparison where there are a few different parts in the mix, which kind of gives you a few variables. Now I've left the best part till last, well what I think is the best part till last, the power consumption and also the temperatures. I used my wattage meter for this and the highest reading that I saw was 410 watts while testing Cyberpunk, which I think is a pretty good result. Now I haven't had time to test the 14700K in the 4070 system in time for this video as it is kind of still uh, semi-assembled, but I will test that and then put it in a pin comment down below plus anything else that I might have missed as I am quite interested to see the difference and you guys might like to know as well. That's another thing that we'll look at in more detail in the comparisons as, with like the range as a whole. Now temperature wise throughout all of the CPU and GPU testing the highest temp I saw on the CPU was 68 and that's before removing the ambient of 22.9 so that's a delta of 45.1. I was really impressed with that result I wish I actually filmed my reaction to it. Now to be fair I am using a 360mm AO but I did do another build with the 14700K which hit a high of 96 with a delta of 76.6 which also used the 360 so something to think about. Also in the press briefing I had with Intel before the launch they mentioned that they were looking to bring the power and temperatures of the new generations down so then it gave them a bit of a baseline to then push performance up again. Now this is only some very basic testing for this video but I certainly have been very surprised by the result. I'm looking forward to getting the other SKUs in so we can see how they perform. I think the i9 will certainly be a bit warmer, but this is certainly a good step forward. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to wrap this video up here. I'm also going to keep this system together for a little while before I take it apart for other videos and stuff. If you want to see anything specific or anything you'd like to know that I haven't covered, please do let me know down in the comments box below and I can reply to that as soon as I can with the answers for you. I'll put the links for all the parts I've used in the description box below if you want to pick any up. Big thanks to Intel and Tech Gigabyte and Kingston for sending it out for me to use. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like and get subscribed. And I'll see you all in the next one.